The NASCAR Xfinity Series race has officially concluded from Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and we see Riley Hurts put up a dominating second half of the race and pick up his first career NASCAR Xfinity Series victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching NASCAR Xfinity Series race in Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the Alsk Uniforms 302. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go and talk about it. So for the green flag drop in today's race, seven Parsons, John Hernimacek, Patrick Emerling, Josh Williams, and Riley Hurts would all have to go to the rear for unapproved adjustments. So at the start of the race, he had Josh Berry lead the field on the outside with Cole Custer on the inside, and Josh Berry got a fantastic start and was able to clear for the race lead. The first cost to race come out lap number four, and Patrick Emerling had a lot of smoke come out, seemed like the engine expired. He went the outside wall really, really hard, had a lot of oil in the car, and that would bring the first caution out. During the caution, Brent Moffat, Joey Gay, Steph and Parsons, and Brennan Poole all pit under the yellow flag. So then went back racing once again in lap 11 with Josh Berry leading the field from the outside with Chandler Smith on the inside. And Chandler Smith got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, on lap 13, the second caution race would come out for Brad Moffat. He got into the outside wall and Joe Graff Jr. had nowhere to go and ran to the back of him. And he hit the outside wall really hard, unfortunately ending his day. Joe Graff Jr. was frustrated after that incident. So then went back racing a lap 19 with Chandler Smith leading the field from the outside with Josh Berry on the inside. And Chandler Smith got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, John Henry Macheco had to start the rear field by lap 20 and was already up in the top 10. And then up front for the lead for like 10 laps, we saw some really great racing between Cole Custer and Chandler Smith for the lead. Eventually, though, Chandler Smith was able to pass, get passed by Cole Custer for the lead, handing the lead to Cole Custer. Cole Custer followed about a tenth, about a second lead over Chandler Smith and would come off the corner and win stage number one. So then all the lead lap cars would then come down pit road with Cole Custer win the race off pit road. Unfortunately, uh, Cole Parker Clareman had an uncontrolled tire and would drop to the rear. And Sammy Smith had to come back down pit road with loose slugs, which would come back to buy him later in this race. So then on the race, sorry, a Cole Custer lead the field from the outside with Daniel Hemrick on the inside. And Cole Custer got a fantastic restart and was able to clear for the lead. Then a lap later, trouble strike going down turn number four when the biggest incident race will end up taking place when Kaz Grawl, unfortunately, would lose an engine from 18th position, would go up in front of the racetrack and collect Brennan Poole, Roger Kruf, we got, we got to see the in-car camera that, Jeremy Clements, Anthony Alfredo, and Kyle Weatherman, and a couple other guys were collected in that wreck as well, including Josh Williams. Tough break there, nobody, anything, nothing anybody can do in that situation. Kaz Grawl lose engine, no, no one had anywhere to go. Just a shame for all his cars, but luckily some of them will continue like Roger Kruf, but unfortunately a lot of cars were out of this race. Because of that, they had to red flag this race to clean up the racetrack, which lasted for about eight and a half minutes. And then when they got back going, Austin Hill, he actually came down pit road with a loose left rear tire. So then on the race, sorry, Cole Custer lead the field from the outside with Daniel Hemrick on the inside. And Daniel Hemrick did a good job trying to challenge for the lead going into turn number four. But Cole Custer was able to clear for the race lead. And then we saw a really good battle up front between John Henry Machek and Cole Custer for the lead. And they were bound for 10 laps. And John Henry was trying everything to get around Cole Custer, but Cole Custer was hanging on. Meanwhile, Riley Hurts was coming out of nowhere and was charging up to the front, had the fastest car on the racetrack, and would charge up to the front, get by John Hunter with two laps to go, and get up to the inside of Cole Custer on the last lap of stage number two, would go to the inside. Cole Custer lost too much ground going to number three, and Riley Hurts is able to come out the final corner and win stage two and this would also be the final caution of the race a huge day for Riley Herbst then only lap cars would come down pit row with Riley Herbst winning the race off of pit row so then on the race started Riley Herbst lead the field from the outside with Cole Custer on the inside and Cole Custer got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead meanwhile Jeb Burn he had to come down pit road as we're going to green flag because he had to pull the side skirt out of the car but as a few laps later went on, Cole Custer would end up getting passed back by Riley Hurts, who had a really strong car and was able to get the lead back and would pretty much dominate the rest of this race. So then with 60 laps to go, Daniel Hammer came down pit road first, then 63 to go, you had Sheldon Creek come down, then the next lap, Chandler Smith and Ryan C came down pit road, but unfortunately Ryan C got an uncontrolled tire, then the next lap, Justin Allgaier, Austin Hill, Lane Riggs pit, then the next lap, Cole Custer, John Hunter, Sam Mayer, Maya Snyder came down pit road, and then Riley Hurts and Sammy Smith came down pit road, and Riley Hurts was able to hold the lead by a huge chunk. And then Sammy Smith, a few laps later, he had to come back down pit road with a loose wheel. At this point, after the green flag pit stops, Riley Hurst had a seven-second lead 
over Cole Custer. But Ryan Hurts would put off to such a big lead, he would pull out at points like 8 seconds and 9 seconds and 10 seconds. It was just so impressive to watch the gap that he had. He would pull out to a near 15 second lead and coming off the final corner after a lot of trials and tribulation in 2023 and also in his hometown, Riley Hurts comes off the final corner and picks up his first career NASCAR Xfinity Series victory and his first top tier win and his first win of the 2023 season. I am so happy for Riley Hurts. I'm not the biggest fan of the guy, but this driver has had a lot of trouble this year that has not been his fault. Electrical issues at Watkins Glen, issues at Daytona that were out of his control, issues at other races at the beginning of the year, had a tire go down to Kansas that didn't even give a chance an opportunity to compete in the playoffs. But Riley Hurts at times this year has shown impressive stuff, and then you got a top five last week at the Charlotte Rubble, and he's been close at times of winning races. At one point, beginning of the year, he was kidding for the regular season championship, but things did not go his way. He finally has a dominant car, wins by 15 seconds, which I think is the biggest lead we've seen anybody have in any series this year in the top three. We'll see if he passes post race inspection. But for now, I think this is a well-earned and well-deserved win. Mass congratulations to Riley Hurst. Really impressive and glad to see that he picked up his first career victory in such dominant fashion. So now we're going to take a look at the race results. I'll give you my scoring thoughts on today's race. So Riley Hurts picks up the victory. John Remacek finishes second. Great run for John Hunter. Great comeback like Riley Hurts. Both of them had to start at the rear of the field. John Hunter had a really, really good car today. Not the fast car in the field, but to finish second, you got to feel really confident going to Homestead. Great run for John Hunter in second place. Cole Custer finished third. He had the best car in the first half of this race, but the car kind of faded in the second half, got too loose, but still gets a very respectful top five finish. Great run for Cole Custer in third. Chandler Smith finished fourth. Thought he would be a threat to win. It looked really good in the beginning, but kind of faded in the longer run, but then recovered a little bit and gets a very solid top five run. Had a chance to win here earlier in the year in Las Vegas. Great run for Chandler Smith in fourth. Sam Mayer finished fifth. They struggled at the beginning of this race, but they made that one car a lot better. And I think it's a really impressive comeback for Sam Mayer to finish fifth. Great run for Sam Mayer. Justin Allgaier finished sixth. Saw a run for Justin Allgaier today. Not the fastest car in the field, but a good run nonetheless, finishing in the top ten. Good run for him. Austin Hill finished seventh. Struggled at points throughout the day, but recovered to finish in the top ten and seventh. Saw a run for him. Brandon Jones finished eighth. Another solid run for Brandon Jones. He's been getting better and better as the year progressed. I do believe Brandon Jones will make the playoffs next year. Good run and getting another top ten finish for Brandon Jones. Dale Hemrick finished ninth, was really good early. The car faded in the end of the race, but still got a solid top 10 finish in ninth. And Lane Riggs finished 10th. Great run for Lane Riggs, of course, making only second start in his NASCAR Xfinity Series career. Is going to run in Marnsville in a few weeks from now. A good run for Lane Riggs to finish in the top 10. The last car on the lead lap. So for him to be the last car on the lead lap, I think is really impressive, all things considered. My Snyder finished 11th, the first car lap down, but honestly, not a bad run from My Snyder, much better than I thought he was going to do. My Snyder thought was probably going to finish like 15th or 20th, but does get a very solid top 15. Good run for My Snyder in 11th. Josh Berry finished 12th, qualified in the pole, and struggled the whole entire race. Thought he'd be a threat to win. Never had the pace for speed. Car faded in the long run. He finished 12th. Park Clareman recovered a little bit to finish in 13th place. Not a bad run, but not a great run. Thought he'd get a top 10, but he does finish in 13th. Parker Rislav finished 14th. Decent run for him. A lot of talk about his future. Maybe headed to RSR next year in 2024. Saw a top 15 run. Qualified great. Hit the outside wall, but did get a top 15 finish. Sheldon Creed finished 15th. Just a disastrous day for this team. Well, not completely disastrous, but not day that they needed. They needed to contend for top 5 and top 10 to stay in the chances. They are now pretty much in a must-win situation going into the next few weeks. Ryan Sieg finished 16th. Decent run despite the uncontrolled tire. Sammy Smith finished 17th. Despite going two laps, 17 Team isn't the worst in the world, but man, they've got to clean up the issues. The loose wheels, you can't have those. There were two loose wheels in this race. Unacceptable in the picker. Cost Sammy Smith what I think could have been a top five run. He had a really good car in the beginning, but unfortunately, the loose wheels cost him a shot at contending for the win. Kyle C finished 18th. Not a bad run for him. Connor Mosak finishes 19th. Ryan Reed returned for the first time in five years. Gets a very solid top 20 finish. The 10 is NBM Motorsports, also an off prime racing car, but hey, Good to see Ryan Reed finish in the top 20, and this really is going to help out the 6-6 team in the owner's point situation. Good run for Ryan Reed in 20th. Daniel Dye finished 21st, not a bad run. Jeff Byrne, who had just had a, not a great day, no speed at all, finished 22nd. Roger Crew finished 23rd. Roger, despite having the issues, hope he's okay after the race with all the carbon monoxide and stuff. 
He finished 23rd. Not a bad run for him. Of course, he's going to run a Phoenix season finale with Hendrick Motorsports. Brad Moffat finishes in 24th. Not a great day. The 25 team really, really struggled. That gives me a little worry for Haley Dean going the next serve. How many issues the last two weeks this 25 team's been having? But he finished 24th. Brendan Poole finished 25th. Seven Parsons finished 26th. Ryan Ellis finished 27th. Blaine Perkins finished 28th. CJ McLaughlin finished 29th. Jeremy Clements finished 30th. Dawson Cramp finished 31st. Qualified really well. Was running top 20 a lot of the day. But unfortunately, they had some sort of issue to relegate and then finishing six laps down. Joey Gase finished 32nd. Josh Williams, after crashing up, finished 33rd. Anthony Alfredo finished 34th. Kaz Grawl finished 35th. Kyle Weather finished 36th. Joe Graff Jr. finished 37th. And Patrick Emerling finishes last in 38th place. So now we're going to talk about the overall race as a whole and I'll give you my scoring thoughts on today's race. The first half of this race was really, really good. There was good racing up front. He had a lot of side-by-side good battles between Chandler Smith and Cole Custer. And then near the end of stage number two, I thought there was good racing. The second half of this race, however, wasn't the most exciting in the world. I will say behind Riley Hurts was pretty good, but Riley Hurts had such a dominant lead. And sometimes you're going to have that kind of stuff happen where guys are just going to completely dominate. So for me... If I had to go and kind of rank how this race went, I probably would give this race maybe an 8 out of... Uh, first half, I'd give probably an 8, 8.5 out of 10. The second half, though, probably a 5 to maybe 4 out of 10. I'm going to average the race out to about a 7.5 out of 10. First half was really, really good. Second, Actually, yeah, 7.5 out of 10 is my score. I'll give that my score for today's race. So that is going to be for the NASCAR Xfinity Series race to be from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. One thing, guys, for watching, please like, subscribe to the channel, throw notifications on, so if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my patron as well. Link description below that, and comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Riley Hurst on picking up his first career victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, we have the NASCAR Cup Series race. we from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The money, I'm not entirely sure what's going to be on the channel. There could be a news video drop on the channel. There also could be some sort of video, that special video dropping. We're just going to have to wait and see. Nonetheless, got a lot of great content on the channel that's dropping soon. I cannot wait for you guys to check that out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, buddy.